I do think about this every day. And, and since I published the book, um, somebody said something that stuck in my mind, which I want to repeat. Uh, they said, when you hear about the news for a cure for childhood leukemia, the reaction isn't, oh, that's going to ruin the planet with all these kids staying alive. So why do we have, the say, have that reaction when we're trying to keep middle-aged and older people alive? So that's one. The second thing is I've put some numbers where my mouth was or my head was um, and published a, a Nature Aging article on the cost savings of extending lifespan by a year or 10 years in the US. And the, the, the value to the economy over the say, 30 years after that discovery would be in the trillions of dollars. Um, and I mean, the numbers are actually 86 trillion for a year and 365 for 10 years. Now that's a lot of money that's currently wasted on what I call sick care, not healthcare. And that money can be put towards education, developing new technologies to treat uh, or prevent climate change. Um, that's a lot of money. And it really is all about the allocation of resources and money. You know, humans can achieve anything. And they can either be making widgets or repairing crashed cars or, I don't know, pumping oil out of the ground. But uh, if you have money to spend on other things, you can put people to work on really productive things um, rather than things that are just currently uh, perhaps too expensive. And if we save this money, we can, we can use that wisely. Um, in terms of population growth, a lot of people worry that we're going to be overpopulated. And the numbers just don't pan out. We're already in most of the world approaching levels um, of replacement. And actually in the US and Europe, we're actually declining. Japan's already in that process. And that's a disaster for the economy if we don't do something about it. Our kids and our grandkids are going to suffer badly economically if we don't do something to keep people productive for longer. And that's what we're talking about here today. So usually what I do when I'm talking about the future is, is with people, um, guys like Brian Green and Lex Friedman, um, George Church, who's in my department. Uh, we, we talk and dream about the future together. Um, and that's my main inspiration. The rest is just what I dream up in, when I'm lying in bed at night, thinking about what the future should be like if, if it was a perfect world. Um, speaking of a perfect world, I got to chat with uh, William Shatner last night, which was a real thrill for me because I, I, as a kid, I was inspired by that somewhat perfect world. And I still feel like we are aiming to get there. Um, and that, that may be what drives me each day is that knowledge that humans can do better. And I just want to, want us to get there as fast as possible.